Hey guys, what's up and welcome to Zero Reviews Tech and I've got a pretty cheap Apollo Lake laptop here, the T-Bow X8S. It's about the cheapest 15 inch laptop I've seen, not on sale, it's about 280. On sale, I've seen it as low as $209 at Geek Buying, which is pretty insane in terms of price. However, I will show you where this laptop cut back corners to make it cheap, but spoiler alert, they did a pretty good job. So the build quality of the laptop is not the greatest since it's plastic and there is a fair amount of flex on pretty much any panel on the laptop the lid, the keyboard, and the underside. To be fair though, the laptop is pretty big, so it's pretty hard to keep it rigid when it's plastic instead of metal. The other thing is that the logo ripped off when I took off the plastic. The logo here is just a simple sticker. There are tons of ports, two USB ports, micro HDMI, SD card, and headphone jack. However, there is a ton of space for more ports. They could have fit at least two extra USBs, but they have not. We also don't find any micro USB or USB-C. Opening out the laptop, and the bezels are super thin, which looks super good. The keyboard is pretty average. There's good key travel, but it's not backlit, and the material is not good either. The trackpad here is nice and big, and multi-finger gestures actually work pretty well. Let's move on to the display. It looks really nice. It's a glossy IPS 1080p display, and the colors are nice and saturated. A decent contrast. Blacks aren't too black, but there's good enough blacks here. Max brightness isn't good at all, though. It's about 250 nits, so no outdoor use you're not gonna be able to see the screen. The audio quality here is average in both volume and quality. It does not get very loud. The quality is lacking in bass. There is a bit of muddling of sound, so it's not super clear. The battery life here is a bit below average. I could get around 5-6 to six hours of screen on time when doing Chrome, and I got a bit more when using Edge. It's obviously not XPS levels of battery life, but it's good enough, I think. Charging takes about 2 hours, which is fairly long as well. We have Windows 10 activated, and we have a fairly responsive eMMC drive, which in turn makes the laptop one of the more responsive Apollo Lake laptops out there in the market today. The 6 gigs of RAM is good for multitasking, but the bottleneck here is still the Apollo Lake CPU. Gaming wise, you can play some basic games, but anything intense, you're gonna have to bump down to 720p for 30 FPS at least. In terms of connectivity, there is no dual band Wi-Fi, but the reception and speed of the normal Wi-Fi is actually pretty decent. Bluetooth works well, and the ports are capable of pretty fast transfer speeds as well. So to conclude, this is a very decent laptop, and the weakest part of the laptop is the build quality. It's actually pretty compact for a 15.6 inch laptop because of the really, really tiny bezels. However, because of plastic and, well, it's a 15 inch screen, so the body is not small, there is some flex in there. At the original price of 280 bucks, I would say no, absolutely not too expensive. There are better options for less money. If you can settle for a smaller than 15 inch screen, 14 inch, 13 inches, there's lots of options there. However, for $209, this is a steal of a deal that really comes by, especially if you want a nice big 15.6 inch laptop. And if you have to have something bigger than 15 inches, you don't really have that many options. And this is one of the fewer options that you can have for a large laptop. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.